And so here we are. I have this is what I got for my 10 gallons of mash. Two 750 milliliter um, bottles of 150 proof alcohol. Um, I should distill this again, but I'm not going to because this project is already a bust. Experiment failed. Now, why? Um, let's see. I've done some math here. Alright, I got uh, one and a half liters is equal to a third of a gallon. So, and my raw materials cost me uh, about $7.50 for the 10 pounds of corn, the, the 10 pounds of um, sugar and the yeast. It was about $7.50. Um, okay, so whenever you uh, figure I only got a third of a gallon out of it, if you extrapolate that out to a whole gallon, that would have been $22.50 um, for this 150 proof alcohol. And if I were to distill that again, assuming no losses, I would get $30 per gallon at 95% ethanol. That's already busted because, I mean, what's gas cost? $250? Then you got to figure what's your time worth to you. Well, the state says that uh, minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, so I'll use that. Right, it took me six hours sitting in front of this still. That's not counting the time it took me to make my mash and, and build the still itself. Just six hours distilling. Alright, at $7.25, that's $43 worth of labor. Add that together, and it cost me $73.50 to make, well, had I made 95% pure ethanol, it would have cost me $73.50 a gallon. Alright, now, most people say that you can get 10% of your mash to turn into pure ethanol. I didn't see that kind of number at all, about a third of that. But, assuming, you know, that my still sucks, I don't know what I'm doing, my mash didn't finish fermenting, any number of things that could have gone wrong, we'll throw my experiment out the window. We'll say that... Had I gotten 10% ethanol like I was supposed to, these are the numbers, what that would look like. So, you're still paying $7.50 in raw materials to make this one gallon of ethanol. So, still it's already already out the window, it's still way more expensive than gas. And let's say, you know, I could have designed a more efficient still that would have gotten better, you know, better results, cut my time down in half. Three hours at seven dollars and twenty-five cents. That's twenty-one seventy-five. Add that together, and you're paying twenty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents per gallon for your best-case scenario ethanol. All right. <clears throat> now people are gonna say, "Oh, what if you've got a farm and you grow all this stuff yourself?" Okay. We're gonna assume just you know, for the best of best-case scenarios, that your raw materials just grow on their own. You don't have to cultivate them. You don't have to spend any time in the fields. It just magically grows, okay? So, free materials, free labor. You're sitting in front of the still for an hour and a half. I cut that time down in half again. So you got a badass still. It only takes you an hour and a half to distill this. You're still paying $10.87 worth of labor. So, let's get to these questions. Can you make it in the backyard? Yes. Is it easy? Not really. Is it dangerous? I didn't feel danger, so I'm going to say no. Cost effective? Hell no. Cost per gallon, 73.50. Legal? No. Unless you file for a... Um, Distilled spirits for fuel purposes producers permit, which you can find on the internet if you go to the um, Bureau of something, Treasury. Go to the Treasury website and you can fill out a form and send it in and get your uh, permit for ethanol producer.
but it takes some lots, you know, so if you're doing this in a process, you're not legal. I wasn't. Can it be stored for years? Yes. Viable alternative to pump gasoline? No. Alright. That right there is the only reason why I do it. It can be stored for indefinite amount of time if it's sealed properly. Um, it'd be a good thing to have on hand, you know, in case of national or uh, natural disasters, or you know, if you're paranoid about the end of the world, having some of the stuff sitting around wouldn't hurt. Um, because gasoline—that's the whole reason why I did this experiment in the first place—was because gasoline can't be stored. You know, like if you want to have a log cabin up in Colorado and with a gas generator and go out there like once every five years. You leave gasoline out there, it's not going to be any good when you go back. But you leave a few gallons of ethanol out there, and, you know, it'll be good for forever. That's the only reason why I would consider making this stuff again, is to store it. Um, Alright. Now, there's a few wing nuts out there on the internet that'll tell you this is a good idea. Um... I hope that I presented enough actual evidence that it's not to keep you from wasting a bunch of money like I did. Because, um, you know, like, alright, this guy Mixcat, he's got a, a pressure cooker, right? Like a one gallon pressure cooker. And this dude says that he, he produces um, ethanol on a regular basis and runs his car 50-50 ethanol and gasoline. You're full of shit, alright? Alright. A one gallon, one gallon um, pressure cooker. Okay, figure this. You just still ten gallons of of beer or mash, whatever you want to call it. You get one gallon. So if your pressure cooker holds one gallon, that means you've got to run it ten times to distill this ten gallon batch. And you've only got one gallon. All right. Let's say your car holds 20 gallons. You want to do half and half? You've got to run that pressure cooker a hundred times. And by then, you're looking way, way more time than this. I mean, it'd take you a whole week. I mean, you wouldn't, ha you wouldn't be able to have a job. Your job would be to put ethanol on your car. Stupid. About the only way that that this would be feasible is if you had thousands of acres and a bunch of slaves to do all your work for you. 